parental alienation refers to a child's refusal to have a relationship with another parent or rejection or resistance to doing so. And it's caused by behaviors of the other parent or it could be also extended family and other people involved in the child's life. But typically it's the other parent that's causing this rejection. And my most recent paper, we found that in the U.S. it's about um, 22 million adults are the victims of parental alienating behaviors um, and they are not reciprocating the behaviors. So they are the primary targets of these behaviors. And the percentage of children in the U.S. who we found were alienated moderately to severely was about 1.3 percent, which is nearly 4 million children. Um, and that doesn't include mild um, alienation, where there's some rejection, but yet there's still a, a positive relationship with the parent, but it's being re resisted by the child. And it doesn't include siblings, because we only asked about one child in the family. So we think it might be much higher than that. There's a kind of a perception that both parents must be contributing to the problem for this child to be rejecting them. You know, one parent must be doing something bad, and then the other parents, and they're both acting badly towards each other. Uh, and in my experience interviewing and talking to targeted parents and researching them, that a lot of them are, are really helpless. They have almost no power or control over what's happening in their lives, in their children's lives. Um, the alienating parent really controls everything. They control access and communication to their child. Anything that that parent will say to the child is interpreted by that child as negative and hostile towards the other parent who they're trying to protect. So my experience was that it's impossible for this person to reciprocate when you actually see the dynamics in these families. We have 18 behaviors that they um, admit to doing or not doing and whether the other parent had been doing them. Uh, and we, this allowed us to see whether or not they were engaging in similar levels of behaviors or if one was not doing anything and the other one was. And people admitted to doing a lot of these really negative behaviors. I should mention that. Um, but what we found for those parents who har did hardly any behaviors and the other parent did seven or more out of 18, those were the ones who were the most alienated from their children. The parents who were reciprocating and both doing it were not alienated from their children. So we know it's not the reciprocity um, of the behaviors that's causing the alienation, and which, which hints at other work that I'm doing showing that this is in a form of intimate terrorism where you have a parent who has very little power to reciprocate, they have very little power to do anything, and they're the ones whose relationship is the most damaged with their child. So for a long time, people have just talked about parental alienation as child abuse, which it is, right? It's, it's very harmful and damaging um, to the child. Um, parents who alienate their children are not only engaging in psychological abuse, but also even physical abuse and social isolation and other types of things to harm that child um, and keep them away from the other parent. But it does a lot of significant damage to that child and to their relationships with others. But it's also, well, it's also considered domestic violence because the intent of the behavior is to harm the other parent and their relationship with the child. And so many behaviors that alienators do aren't always involving the child. The child can be a weapon that's used against them, but they will engage in many, many behaviors just to hurt the other parent. They'll engage in um, legal and administrative aggression, you know, making fi false reports of abuse, um, calling police to do wellness checks on them when their children are visiting, even though there's nothing wrong, to make it appear that that parent is dangerous. They will send them threatening and harassing emails and text messages and badmouth them to everybody around. So all of these behaviors actually directly map on to the behaviors that intimate terrorists use in battery um, kind of cases, where you have a parent, male or female, who has a lot of control and power and engages in coercive tactics and um, uh, very uh, hostile and aggressive tactics towards the other person to control them and have and exert their power over them. This is when I was in Iceland a few years ago um, speaking about this at a conference. Uh, that was sort of the basis of my whole talk is outlining all of these behaviors that these parents are doing and they map right on to what uh, intimate terrorists use. We evaluated trauma symptoms of parents who've been alienated from a child, as well as depression and suicide ideation. And we found that parents across three poles in the U.S. and Canada were much more, had many more post-traumatic stress symptoms as parents who 
weren't being alienated and people who don't even have children. So the general population without children. So they were the most, had the most trauma symptoms. They also were more depressed than all of those other groups. Alienated parents who were not reciprocating behaviors were the most suicidal compared to those parents who were um, not, uh, who were reciprocating behaviors and parents who admitted to being an alienator and engaging a lot of these behaviors. And of the parents who were moderately to severely alienated, nearly half, or 47%, said they thought about killing themselves in the last year due to a child custody dispute or conflict with their ex. So it's very severe um, just for targeted parents and how they're coping with this. And very few have resources because one of the strategies of an intimate terrorist and an alienator is to socially isolate the child and the target of the, of the behavior.